Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Ali Dino and together with my wife Maya, I'm refitting a Cape George Cutter 36. So pour yourself a drink, uh, sit down and enjoy. Last week we did some big visual upgrades to the boat. It's starting to look really good. It's so nice to see the boat turn beautiful again. These are exquisite boats. The really lovely design, uh, the lines of the boat, but then paired with the uh, very traditional looking cabin top uh, that has all of the beauty elements, the eyebrow, uh, all the bronze hardware, those big ports. Yeah, um, it's, it's time uh, to, to make that all come to life again. So this week we've got some more beautifying tasks. Maya will continue varnishing the overhead beams and I have to devise a plan on how to installing the rest of the eyebrow on the cabin sides uh, without putting in screws into our new fiberglass. And we're also gonna have uh, the random behind the scene task here and there. Here is the original bowsprit. And Maya's dad is visiting. Hey, good morning. And he's gonna help us with some engine related work. Come to think of it, this is uh, going to be a pretty crazy episode with a lot happening. So first up, let's talk about the cutlass bearing. All right, I just came back from lunch and I brought something with me. It's the new cutlass bearing. Uh, it's been sitting in the freezer for like three days, uh, so hopefully it has shrunk minimally. A uh, cutlass bearing, as the name implies, is a bearing that keeps the shaft centered. Uh, so it goes inside of the stern tube. See if it's the correct specs, inch and a quarter shaft. Should be ours. Ooh, so far so good. A thing of beauty, I would say. Wow! Just another inch to go. Huge success. Beautiful. All right, uh, super excited to have uh, this one in place because uh, they can be quite difficult to deal with uh, sometimes. Next, I will address the fairing that I added here. Uh, it's been a couple of days ago. Hopefully it's uh, cured enough. I mean, it's not gonna cure more. Uh, so yeah, uh, go grab my trusty sander, my trusty sandpaper and uh, get this uh, smooth uh, so that we're getting closer to being ready to apply barrier coat on the bottom, which is super exciting. We have a visitor. Yes. Hi, Dad. Hey. Hello, back again. Back again. So, yes. in case you're new here, this is my dad, Brian. Hello. He's helped us many times before on the boat. A wonderful addition. Give me a very brief summary of what you guys are working on. Uh, shaft alignment, uh, engine alignment, and we are trying to uh, starting to think about the upper drive. Okay. Uh, which is part of the drivetrain, um, and that needs a bit of consideration. And the aqua drive is the brand. Constant velocity joint is the item, right? Yes, okay. correct. Yeah. Yeah. And the the big idea of the of the aqua drive is that 
It has a thrust bearing that pushes against a bulkhead that you install in your boat. And uh, it's the bulkhead that takes all the thrust and relieves the engine mounts of any thrust whatsoever. So the engine can just bounce around on its, on its uh, vibration isolating feet and then the bulkhead takes all the thrust. Yeah, and the benefits of that are it reduces vibration and noise, and uh, yeah, uh, there is not uh, that wear uh, on the engine and engine mounts, and uh, it allows for misalignment uh, quite uh, a lot uh, compared to a traditional setup. So uh, we had one before, uh, we really like it, and we're going with one again. And thanks a lot to Mac Boring and Parts Company, uh, who is the distributor of AquaDrive in the US. Uh, they gave us our unit at wholesale price, and hopefully they can uh, yeah, use our videos uh, to showcase such an installation, if they deem it uh, worthy. Seven eight. Yeah. In between mark of the seven and eight, that's the five. Mm -hmm. Right. So the weight on the one end might be jinxing us a little bit. Because on an inch and a quarter shaft, it seems to be mm -hmm. relatively more than it should be, and there yeah. should be a, a, a ratio. Should we CA up. glue the gap at least? So then we're only talking of within the cutlass bearing. Maybe we are uh, about to invent something beautiful, though. Nobody ever allows for movement. Maybe that allows the cutlass to move around and not wear. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting theory. So far, everybody was clamping it so tightly that then it wears. No. Ah. All right. Uh, yeah, I go get the washers and the okay. well, I'll, rod. I'll go pull the shaft out from inboard. So to start, we're working on the shaft alignment. Um, and I already previously was able to replace the cutlass bearing, but since I know that they're so hard to get out in the future, I maybe was a little too aggressive uh, with sanding uh, inside the tube to allow it to go in smoothly, so there's actually a little bit of play now in the cutlass. So we are actually gonna glue it in place. We can then determine that the shaft ultimately uh, spins true. Because the washers are too small. Uh, to lock the, the threaded rod at the end and move the nut. <laughs> so I guess it's unavoidable though to set myself up for easier time when I have to replace it again in the future. That's what I was trying to avoid, but it's better to have a well-set cutlass now. It's better to have a well-set cutlass yeah. now, and depending on the product we use, and we can think about that, it won't be permanent, but we need something to have it set better yeah. in, in, the, in that position. And we can maybe, mm -hmm. put, we can maybe put a release agent on, on this on your cutlass bearing, mm -hmm. so that the oh, filler that we use doesn't set completely on yeah. this. While all of this happens, I'm going to go continue varnishing, or getting ready to varnish actually. I'm going to sand the beams up in the head area, and then we'll be able to apply varnish, maybe today actually, it shouldn't take too long. Um, the beams up above the V-berth are done. I just have to put a bit of coat of paint on the, you know, the in-between sections, you know what I mean? They look pretty good, I'm glad I'm doing this. Aladino helped to take the wall out which separates the head from the rest of the boat which just gives me easier access to varnish and sand. All the beams at once, yeah, that'll, that'll definitely make things a bit simpler. Welcome. 
Now I have full access to these beams. They're gonna get a good coat of varnish. And this wall had never been permanently reinstalled. Uh, we put it in in a very temporary way just before trucking the boat up to Canada. Um, but it has to be tabbed in properly and everything. It was just held in with a few screws. So not a big ordeal, but definitely made my life easier. So the cutlass bearing is in place again and the epoxy is curing and while it does uh, we have a little bit of work uh, to do on the bowsprit. It's really nice to have many uh, open cans, um, many different tasks. So as paint dries on one end I can jump over to another one so I'm constantly going back and forth and uh, have, have quite a couple of options. Okay, so here is the original bowsprit that has gotten a bit of a, a rebuild. What we are doing right now is uh, this is the chain roller, for example, that's going to go back in place. And then there is a rod going through and anywhere where we either have bolts holding it down or rods like this one going through, we're going to add a phenolic or a fiberglass tube. Uh, horizontally, we're going to glue that in. So that's missing. I've already done it for where the teeth platform goes on the sides. There's already tubes inserted here. And we will have uh, the stay sail fitting here. Uh, so two bolts and so also two tubes going in here. And the same with a stainless steel uh, base plate here that will hold down the bowsprit because we're not no longer going to have a Samson post and uh, instead we're gonna have these uh, beefy carriage bolts, six of them here on this plate, uh, holding the bowsprit down. And another change is that the bowsprit, uh, before it was not allowed to sit on deck, since it was notched into the Samson post, uh, this area was uh, notched away uh, to allow for water to move and uh, maybe for it to dry. So what we're gonna do now though, since we wanna compress the bowsprit against the deck, it's gonna be easier to also seal uh, these through bolts going through better. So what we're gonna do is uh, take away some material here and here, and then we're, we have a teak plate uh, or a teak uh, base of a quarter inch that we are gonna uh, fit into this area where it's gonna sit on deck. So now we're getting ready to make cuts, uh, very shallow depth though, uh, we marked the depth and we're going to remove a piece here where it sits on the foredeck and we're going to remove this little raised uh, pad so that we have one flush surface to then put our teak onto it. We ain't got no time to leave. Smells good. Whole world gonna back LBJ up now LBJ have took a stand. So we figured the epoxy on the cutlass bearing uh, would have uh, cured fully by now, so we returned. Because of Brian's engineer background, I always uh, try to squeeze him to the fullest and get ideas and uh, his point of view uh, whenever it comes to engine related tasks. Yes. 
what's happening, you guys? Uh, we're test fitting our template bulkhead. So that's the one that will be glassed in heavily. And so now when the propeller pushes, it will not push the shaft and the engine. It will only push this bulkhead, which is well tapped in and that push pushes the boat. Okay. So that's what they call the thrust bulkhead. So um, you're, you're saying this is a template one. So what's the actual one going to be made out of? Uh, the actual one can be G10 or aluminum. Uh, we are not 100% decided yet. For now, it's uh, coming up with the location, uh, seeing what size it needs to be, and then eventually, when we're happy with this one, we're going to make it out of the actual material. I see. All right. Now it's all about position. We had the engine template in here uh, because this one needs to be at a very specific location, of course, um, and it also needs to be 90 degree to the shaft this way and um, this way. So we're trying to determine those things before doing the actual. And the position of this thrust bearing is what is going to determine the ultimate alignment of the shaft itself. Yeah. Yeah. So this part needs to be aligned uh, well. And from here forward is where the flexible joints here allow for misalignment. I but see. From here back it has to be aligned and that's what we're trying to figure out now. So okay. the, the real benefit of the whole thing is that your propeller shaft through the cutlass bearing always stays perfectly aligned and your engine which is sitting here can bounce around and do its thing on its vibration mounts as much as it wants and it's never going to affect shaft alignment. Fantastic. And small changes in loading of the boat and movement in the seaway is never going to change the alignment of the shaft going through the gutless bearing. All right. Mm -hmm. Once we came up with our template, uh, Brian is going to take it home and uh, he's actually going to turn it into the actual bulkhead uh, made out of aluminum. So in his hometown, there is um, a boat builder and they specialize in aluminum craft. Uh, they're actually quite famous, um, but yeah, that's where he will source some marine grade aluminum. We could have also gone for G10, uh, but aluminum will be just as good. And that's what is easy to source for us at this point. So sadly, Brian had to leave. Uh, he only can uh, take that much time off, uh, but we uh, very much appreciate his help. And I'm pretty happy how far we got, um, but I'm actually going to focus on the other tasks now, which include all the painting uh, that is about to come soon. So I'm going to go back to sanding primer. But this is progressing really nicely. Uh, we're on to a very good start and we're going to pick it up again uh, next time Brian visits. I told you that there is a lot in this episode, so hopefully you don't have a whiplash yet. Uh, but here we go, on to the next task. I'm continuing on the eyebrow here tonight. Uh, that's always an evening mission. I don't want to waste critical hours. I uh, waste hours that I would be spending in bed instead. Um, yeah, so super happy how the corners glued in and the front that don't have a bend. They're relatively small, so just the uh, stickiness of the Cicaflex uh, held it in place. But on the sides, the concern is that the, the strips of teak are much longer and they have a bend in it, so uh, I don't think the Cicaflex uh, by itself would be able to hold it in place. So instead I've devised a plan here, I glued in these T-nuts instead. Uh, so as you saw from the t little time lapse, I first uh, just clamped a bunch of uh, 2x4 uh, similar pieces to the bulwarks, uh, and then by using the clamp I could uh, dry fit the teak eyebrow, uh, to determine its location and then I marked the holes, the middle of the holes using a small Forstner bit and then uh, I knew exactly where to glue in the T-nuts and then I put them in place with CA glue and activator and it's astonishing how, how, how they hold. Um, I braid the metal a little bit of the T-nut, I braid a little bit the paint on the cabin top and uh, yeah but also keep in mind, uh, they're not. This is not the only thing that will hold the uh, eyebrow in place. It's literally just to avoid screws going into the fiberglass. So I know it's a little more work, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a priority for me, and uh, it's not that bad altogether. 
I'm just waiting for uh, screws now that are this exact uh, T-nut thread, uh, 1032, I didn't have any of those. And uh, yeah, um, then it's actually gonna be Sika flexed in place and the Sika flex will do the majority of the job. Uh, these are literally just to be able to uh, get the eyebrow in position and screw it in place until the Sika flex is uh, holding it instead. So for now though we have to let this cure and um, soon though we can remove the tape and uh, do the reveal on the eyebrow next week. For now it's time to wrap up, a lot has happened, um, a lot of work in the engine room and uh, of course uh, the aesthetic touches on the exterior that uh, will also keep progressing. Thanks for watching, huge thanks to our patrons and an extra big thanks to the names now appearing on the screen. Uh, for making sure that we can keep uh, producing these videos. We will see you all next Friday.